Welcome to the Gab Talks by the Independent Press Award. I'm your hostess, Gabby Olzak. To participate in the 2024 Book Award competitions, please visit independentpressaward.com and nycbigbookaward.com. This podcast, we have the pleasure of speaking with Jim Reamy, author of Negotiation Simplified, a framework and process for understanding and improving negotiating results, a multiple award-winning book, it received the Nonfiction Authors Association's Gold. Additionally, it's the winner of the 2024 Independent Press Award and the 2023 New York City Big Book Award in audiobooks nonfiction. Negotiation Simplified is also a distinguished favorite in the 2024 Independent Press Award in the Business General category. Jim is, Jim is a negotiation educator and consultant, mediator, and arbitrator for complex domestic and international disputes. He's the principal of Raymond ADR. Prior to his roles as CEO and chairman of public and private companies in the U.S., Canada, and China, Jim was a commercial trial and business attorney in Chicago for 19 years. He now travels the globe to educate and consult with senior executives, government officials, and attorneys. Jim's executive education program includes the Oxford Program on Negotiation at the University of Oxford's Zed Business School, where he imparts his expert negotiation skills in international arbitration. In addition, he's a faculty member and program director in the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators Fellowship Training Qualification Program, just to name one of the numerous associations Jim affiliated. He's available for speaking engagements and consultations with offices in Manhattan and Chicago. Jim joins us today from Illinois. Congratulations, Jim. Nice to see you again. Thank you. Had the pleasure of meeting you at Book Camp this past spring. Uh, thank you for joining us for a full-length Gab Talk. This is pretty exciting. Um, so, Jim, here. thank you. So, Jim, you're an expert negotiator, arbitrator, and mediator. How have your joint um, careers as attorney and business executive equips you with the tools necessary to be successful in this field? Serving as an arbitrator is a little different because an arbitrator is a private judge of a dispute. So that's uh, different. But CEO, mediator, advocate, uh, uh, trial attorney, or just corporate attorney, the essence of success in all of those endeavors is communication and effective mm -hmm. communication. And the key to effective, successful negotiation is listening, hearing what's being said, being self-aware. All of that relates to or is the essence of effective communication. And then what's, of course, is behind all that is preparation. If you have those four elements down, preparation, listening, being self-aware, you're going to be an effective negotiator. So the skills are all interrelated. Um, Jim, let's back up just a little bit because I want to delve more into those skills. How would you define negotiation? Negotiation is a process and it's a dialogue. It's the combination of the both. The parties are coming together to meet, to reach a mutually acceptable result. And that it's not necessarily compromise, but it's finding common ground. And then the difference between a good result and a great result is the value of those things that are not critical, but that are desired that you secure in addition to those elements that are critical. And we can talk more about that. And I define those elements as goals, needs, and wants, but I'm ahead of myself. Yeah, you are. That's question number nine. So just hold on just a minute. Um, <laughs> So in Negotiation Simplified, you you like to say, and I would say this is sort of your tagline, that it's written by a practitioner for the practitioner. As stated in your intro, there have been a number of negotiation books out there in the market. So what makes yours unique? I think it's a combination of two things. Uh, one, it's the tone. It's written for an educated, somewhat sophisticated reader. It's not a rote list of steps to follow. The goal of negotiation supply, the goal of any good negotiator is to identify options. And what I'm doing is I'm not telling you how to do it, but I'm giving you a framework to 
think about and to prepare that you can then use when you execute. And that preparation results in options, which you can then use in order to hopefully get the results that you're looking for later on down the line. If you option said- A doesn't work, then you can go to option B, et cetera. And there's a reason behind each of those. That's what differentiates. It's the framework and the analysis, not the how. Not the how. You, you, in fact, you say negotiations are complex. You, you deal with very complex um, negotiations in your career as attorney and also as a CEO. Um, but the actual art of negotiation is not. You touched on this earlier. Um, you maintain from your vast experience that successful negotiating really requires the mastery of just four foundational skills. Touch on those and tell us, Jim, which one would you say is the absolute most essential skill to master? The four skills. Goal setting, preparation, listening, and being self-aware, which really comes down to communication, effective communication. They're all important, but the most important is goal setting. Where do you want to end up? Why do you want to end up? And that's the piece that remarkably most people give the least amount of thought to until they're down the road. When I talk about setting a goal and I talk about doing it with granularity, I like to use the story of the orange. If you, I can have a moment for later. Common story. It's used in almost every negotiating class, and it goes like this. There's a mother and two daughters in a kitchen preparing a family feast. There's a single orange on the table. Both daughters reach for the orange at the same time. A fight ensues. The mother, very wise, says, daughter A, why do you need the orange? I need 100% of the peel for this salad dressing that I'm making, for the the zest. Daughter number two, why do you need it? I need 100% of the juice for the cake frosting that I'm making, for the orange cake frosting. The solution is very simple. You both get 100% of what they want. The story is almost always told to explain why and to illustrate that critical question why, which is the most important tool in every negotiator's toolbox. I use it for a different reason. Think about that dispute. There never should have been a fight over the arch. If both daughters had thought about what they wanted with the granularity of juice or the peel, there wouldn't have been a fight. So when I talk about goal setting, you've got to identify the end result that you're looking for and why you want that result with the granularity, the the specificity of juice or peel. That's the most important goal. That's that's a good story. Um, I guess that would tie into what we were speaking about earlier, wants and needs. Why is it so important to distinguish between the two and to define the two? Well, in order to achieve your goal, there are certain things that are critical. Those elements that must be secured, I call needs. If you don't get all of them, you haven't achieved your goal. You don't have a deal. Yeah. Wants are everything else. And you need to distinguish what's critical to the deal to what is nice to have so that you can make your deal and where to place your emphasis. And I don't know whether I'm jumping ahead into your list of questions, but the difference between a good deal and a great deal is the quantity and the value of the wants. Mm -hmm. So what you're really doing at the end of the day is you are trading, not needs, because you don't get all your needs, you don't have a deal. What you're trading to make a deal, good or great, is wants. And what you're trying to do is find wants of, low value to you, but high value to your counterpart. And conversely, wants of high value to you, low value to your counterpart that you then trade. And I can give you lots of examples. And and you do, and you do. And I love this about Negotiation Simplified. It is very user-friendly and it's practical. You provide a lot of tools and questions for negotiating. And I like, Jim, that at the end of each chapter, you have a short takeaway. But one of my favorite uh, parts is that um, I particularly enjoyed the anecdotes that you include from your colleagues from around the world. You have CEOs, ambassadors, attorneys spanning numerous uh, professions and industries. 
when you interviewed um, these folks and they shared their anecdotes, what do all of these skilled negotiators have in common that we can learn? They're all effective communicators. They all understand before they begin exactly where they want to end up. Their goal. Exactly where they want to go. Mm. And they all, you know, these are the four skills. And they all spend a lot of time before they begin the process of preparing, learning as much as they can so that one, they can communicate very effectively. And secondly, so that they can ascertain the values of the wants in order to achieve great results. Not you just talk, results. You talk about concepts that also need to be mastered before the skills. What What are those all about? Four concepts. The, the goal listening, preparation listening, and yeah. self-awareness? Yes, those four, yeah. okay. yes. Uh, those and are the, the four. And the preparation. You just said that so, was so important with these folks from all over the globe that you interviewed, that they all prepared. Yeah, and, and, and what a lot of the book, every, every negotiation lecture, every negotiation class says you got to prepare. Great. How do you prepare? What do you prepare? And I give you a process to think about that so that you can do it effectively. But the, those common elements, where do I want to end up? You really need to think that through and rarely is it done sufficiently. Why do you want to end up? That why question. Why do you want to end up where you think you do? And as you really delve into that and plumb the depths of that question, you may find up that you're five or 10 or even 15 degrees to the left or right of where you thought you wanted to be which gives you a more precise group. What is everything that you need in order to achieve that goal? And why is that quote need a need and not a want? Mm. And then in terms of your wants, what's the value to that want? So for example, color uh, on a product, how important is blue versus white? Is it important? And I can give you an example where color may be very important to to your counterpart, but not important to you. And, and very quickly, think yeah. about you, you're going to buy a car um, and your dealer happens to have 10 blue cars on the lot. You're very concerned about price. You don't care whether the car is blue, red, or white. Right. You're going to get a much better deal on that blue car than you will on the white car. Because there are so many of them. That's right. The dealer needs to reduce his his or her inventory right. of that, that blue. So in the negotiation process, in identifying the value in your preparation, how important is color to you? Well, if the both part, both counterparts, the dealer is going to say, yeah, it's really important because I have an excess capacity, excess inventory. You, low. That's something that you can trade. Mm -hmm. Then that last element of self-aware that really comes down to communication is my counterpart. By the way, notice I'm always saying counterpart, not adversary, not opponent, not competitor, counterpart, my equal yes. on the other side of the table. Is my counterpart hearing what I'm trying to convey? Again, communication, effective communication. Right. And, and if not, why? Hmm. And that goes to another element that's often overlooked, which is socializing. Um, you know, this typically comes up in the context of um, intercultural uh, cross-national negotiations where- And you've done a lot of that in China. You've yeah. done a lot of negotiating there. It it should happen, and it does happen to a lesser degree in domestic and, uh, and in U.S. negotiations as well. What's really happening in that socialization process when you're talking about your, your kids and their athletic endeavors and whatever is- you're learning about your counterpart so that you can effectively negotiate, uh, communicate during the negotiation. So for example, if your counterpart's son is very involved in a sport, baseball, it may be appropriate to use a baseball analogy during the negotiation mm. to better explain a, a nuanced issue. It's all about communication and, and that's what it's well, that's what's driving getting the best results, understanding. Preparedness, preparedness, understanding, right. and um, communication. So let's segue into this. I know in the beginning of our conversation, Jim, you said that the book was written for um, 
business executives. It's sophisticated, but it's really not. It's very simple to read. It's You have to be smart, but it's simple to read. Yeah. Um, but who else can use it? You just gave us a few analogies, a car dealership, your kid's baseball team. So who else is this book meant for? It's really meant for anyone. Yeah. Uh, and anyone who's not looking for a rote set of steps to follow. Mm. Uh, we negotiate in all of our lives. It, you know, I negotiate with my spouse as to who's going to take the, the garbage out. Um, and these are the elements. What's in a complex negotiation are the same elements that are in a simple one. So mm -hmm. understanding that and understanding the process that you think about and how you frame what you're doing is universally uh, applicable to all negotiations. Jim, what is the difference between negotiating and haggling? Because I think a lot of people confuse the two. There is a lot of confusion. Um, and part of it is based upon one of my favorite uh, TV shows, Bond Stars. Haggling, that is, show. <laughs> uh, haggling is where you're simply throwing numbers back and forth, where there's a a product that has a intrinsic value of $20, the vendor is saying, give me a hundred, the buyer is saying 10 cents and you throw back numbers back and forth to reach a number. That's just tossing out numbers. That's haggling what you do in in the, uh, the flea market. Okay. Negotiation is a reasoned based process where for every position, there's a reason given that underpins that position and that is related. So for example, when I'm in a negotiation and the, my counterpart says, I'll tell you what, I'm going to drop my price 10%. My response, which is typically expected is, okay, I'm going to come up 10%. That's not my response. The response is, thank you very much. What do you mean, thank you? Why? I gave my number based upon these reasons. Right, your goal. You're dropping your price. It's only demonstrating to me that the number that you put out is not the correct number. Tell me why your number is correct and why mine is wrong, and then we can address that. That's a negotiation, not, well, I'll come up 10% because you came down 10%. That's aggro. Got it. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. Terrific. How would you define a successful negotiation? And, and, and is there a winner in a negotiation? Great. Thank you for asking the question. Negotiation is not about winning. You know, the the joke that you often, uh, often hear is, you know, I, I want to win and I want them to lose. Yeah. That's not a negotiation. Negotiation is achieving your goal, whatever that goal is. And uh, and the successful negotiation, you know, successful negotiations are where both parties achieve their goal. So what's the difference between a good negotiation and a great negotiation? Yes. Yeah. That's what I was talking about with wants getting as many wants of high value as you can in addition to securing all of your needs. So you don't get all your needs, you don't have a deal. And both sides have to get all of their needs to have a deal. So you're not going to have a result, a successful result, without your needs and goals being achieved. Needs secured, goals achieved. Needs secured, okay. Um, so how, um, in, in your in your vast experience as an attorney, as a businessman, a CEO, how do you handle failure? I'm sure there's been failures in, in your professional life. And what lessons have you learned from them? Well, how do you define failure? If I haven't achieved my goals, mm -hmm. have I failed? I, my father-in-law, who's an extraordinarily successful businessman, uh, said something to me just after I met my wife before we were married, just, right, just after I we, uh, I was licensed as an attorney. And he said the best deals he ever made were the ones he didn't make. Think about that. If you know what you're doing and why you're doing it and why you need something, if you don't make the deal because you can't get it, that's a great result. Was he a, was he a mentor of yours? And the, and the art of negotiation? Yeah, we approach things differently, so I wouldn't go that. <laughs> but he had, but he had many pearls of wisdom that I tried to listen to. That's that's a good one. The I I love that one. The that that skills he ever made is true. It's yeah. true. I think about that. And when I was practicing law as an advocate, 
uh, and frankly, as a CEO talking to my, my colleagues and uh, those within my management team, is not making the deal is not a failure. So to answer your question, what is a failure? How do you define it? I don't find not making a deal a failure. Frankly, I consider that a success mm -hmm. if it's for the right reasons, right. which is the whole essence of negotiation simplified. It's a reasoned based process. That was my next question. Um, in, in closing, uh, the most important qualities a successful negotiator can have. Driving, well, let me rephrase that. Understanding the reasons behind one's own position and one's counterpart's position, and then having the flexibility to look for common ground using the knowledge that's secured. So it goes back to those four skills. If you're not listening and you're not effectively communicating, it's almost impossible to find the underpinnings, the reasons behind the position. So you really have to identify what those positions are, understand why they're there, and then use your creativity and flexibility to find common ground within them. And there usually is, not almost always, but usually. Jim, do you have a mantra that you uh, adhere to every day? I try to listen effectively and be sensitive to my unconscious biases. You know, I've, I've interviewed a lot of um, leaders in the industry, authors that have written books on leadership, and that is the one common thread, listening and communication. Listening and communication. So when our audience visits your website, because I couldn't possibly begin to list all of your accolades and all of your uh, professional successes and your affiliations in my intro, it was absolutely impossible. But when our audience visits your website, they'll be able to read about, um, read your biography and see what you've done and how accomplished you are. What do you think there, I was very surprised by this, particular facts, but what do you think they're going to be most surprised to read about? That I hold 19 domestic and foreign patents on aerodynamic enhancement devices. How did you guess? Yes, that's exactly it. I mean, all the rest, not not that it was expected, but that was a little, wow. Yeah, out of uh, uh, let, let me be very clear. Um, I conceived of the concept. I retained professionals to convert my concepts into technologies that were patentable. But it's the same skills. Yes, I need yes. questions. And yes. then, frankly, securing the patents with my patent counsel, we went to the patent office and we explained to the patent examiner why this was unique and why it was special. That had to be a negotiation, a huge negotiation right there. It's the same skills. I wouldn't call yeah. it a negotiation, but it was a, it was an explanation because, you know, why is this different? What makes it unique? So, you know, go back to your first question. What's the commonality of, of all of the things that have been done? It's hearing their concerns and effectively communicating the responses. Mm -hmm. Listening. So, Jim, are you working on anything else? The book has obviously been very well received. You've, you've uh, won multiple awards. What's next? Uh, I'm very involved in my... Uh, ADR, Alternative Dispute Resolution uh, Practice, serving as a mediator and and a uh, arbitrator. Uh, I've done some, one of the hot issues in the ADR world is dispute avoidance, dispute prevention. Uh, and I've been working with some colleagues in best practices and processes to make that happen. Um, I don't have another book yet, uh, but uh, if I have something to write, I, I look forward to doing it. It's been wonderful working with you again. Yeah, you, you, same with you. So, Jim, where can our uh, audience, our readers, our listeners find out more about you, your interesting and storied past, and purchase Negotiation Simplified? Well, the book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble. It's available through independent booksellers. Ingram carries the book, although I was told yesterday they're out of stock. So oh, that's wonderful. Congratulations. <laughs> that's great. Thank, thank you. Hopefully that will change uh, quickly. That publisher has some in their warehouse. Uh, in terms of learning about me, Negotiation Simplified Book is a website. It's essentially a splash page, but it has my ADR, my primary business uh, website on there. That will give you a lot more information about who I am and what I do. 
Excellent, excellent. So thank you so much for joining us today, Jim. It was really a pleasure to see you again. Thank you so much. Have a great day. This is your hostess, Gabby Olzak of The Gab Talks. Join us at our next podcast when we speak with author Robin Reams. Until next time, keep on reading.